or he can go anywhere on the map. So he can take Lifestealer with him. That is a very strong combination. And of course, you can Prepare just combo that with pretty much battle. anybody because Shadow Shaman wants to get a Blink Dagger, Earthshaker wants to get a Blink Dagger, Brewmaster wants to get a Blink Dagger. So Lifestealer, just get damage. You already have the initiation. You go with your team. Actually, I really like this synergy quite a bit. So VG is going to be moving across the map. We have uh, Tidehunter coming down to drop an Observer Ward. This is going to allow him to see where his opponents are standing at all times. And if he can do this correctly, it's going to be very good for him. He's going to put it down right here. Now, it's very important. If uh, if Newbie can disable this or they can kill it with a Sentry Ward of their own, it means they should get some advantage in the lane. But if this ward stays up, Tidehunter is always going to see if he's standing here in the hard lane. He's always going to see if the supports are coming over here to gank him or if they're coming this way to gank him. This means that he's going to allow to back up. He's going to be able to back up every time and run back to safety. So it's very important that they try to get this to ward, but finding it is very difficult. It could be anywhere from here to over here. It could be down here. It could be anywhere here. Game it could be placed supports. over here. Where is it? Can they get it? I don't know. It's like a little mini game you yeah, know, when you're playing a support within the game. Something I want to mention, it's not typical that we see this. Look at Banana playing the Shadow Shaman. He went boots first. Does yeah. this mean he's going to be roaming around? This means he can't deny, actually, because he doesn't have any sentries. He spent all of his gold on an item that makes him run really fast at the start the of the game. Begins. He's a very slow hero, but this means he's going to roam around, like you said, and try to get kills. What They're waiting Rome for the rune. Mean? The rune is top. It's an illusion. illusion. Roam means that you're going to generally leave from the, your lane where you normally stand, and you're going to go to a different lane and try to show up unexpectedly and try to get an easy kill. If they can get those kills and he can roam around and give pressure to your opponents, then it's very good for them. Also, the probably you know the probably the main reason he got boots of speed here is because he's against a tide hunter. Tide hunter is a melee hero, so if he has boots advantage over that hero, it allows him to continuously contest him. But unfortunately for him, Tide also went boots yep. first. So this little advantage that he was hoping to get here is actually not going to work. Yeah, oh, a bit of a mistake from that. He's going to notice that, and I think he's just going to start roaming like you talked about. Because this is a hero with a couple of abilities that can be used to single out somebody from the enemy lineup. Actually, he gets Aether Shock first. This is his damage nuke. As you can see, he's going to braid hits with Tidehunter. But Tidehunter is so beefy. I mean, look at that big, fat watermelon. But uh, the other two abilities he has, one is a hex turning your opponent into a chicken, meaning they, they can't really move very fast and they're disabled from using any abilities. And his third ability is Shackle, where you just hold an enemy in place as you channel it away, meaning you can't actually move, but it's a very long disable, and I'm kind of surprised that he's just going to be with his boots in the end just don't matter a whole lot well I, guess. I, I think he, i think he just got them because he wanted to make sure that tide hunter didn't have the easiest time against him and he grabbed ether shock because it's by far one of the best level one spells in the game for in terms of damage 140 is very high most spells do 75 to 100 so if by grabbing this it allows him to pressure the tide hunter a bit more and try to prevent him from getting super easy free farm so it's not working very well tides getting a lot but it does give him some leverage there. And he's gotten level two from the neutrals anyways. Actually, Banana making some mistakes here. The pull through didn't work out. So this is a, a quite a big mistake by its support because what Dyer's it does is it groups up this wave attack. here, which is three crepes, creeps with this wave here. So now there's crepes, let's delicious. Prepped crepes and Nutella. That's all I want to talk about right now. <laughs> um, now there's extra creeps, which means this wave is stronger, which means it's going to push, which means it's easy for Tide to get experience. And this means Tide should hit level six really fast this game. Partially because of Banana's mistake just now. Yeah. Effect comes into effect, but of course we saw Tidehunter. He got levels last game, maybe not as fast as he would have liked, but he never got a Blink Dagger until the very late stage of the game. So I think that's crucial for him. But the beautiful thing about being on this side, meaning the Dire, and he's all alone. Anchor Smash, which is his third ability, will deal splash damage in the area around him, and it actually works on these Ancients, which I would assume. Camera, that'd be great for. Thank you so much. I would assume. I mean, what do you think? He's think he's gonna stack these because. Remember, these spawn every one minute. If there's units already there, they won't spawn. So what you want to do is pull them about seven or six seconds before that. Yeah, he's going to be able to get there in time. Up. Normally, you don't need to stack Ancients if, you're, if your opponents are messing up their lane equilibrium, but it looks like the wave actually did end up pushing back towards Newbie. So the wave is now controlled. There's equal creeps here. Oh. The wave sitting here is I hope great. He gets it. A little bit of a misplay there. He missed the auto attack. Oh, he messed it up. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. That so, stupid Triceratops. Unbelievable. Yeah. If it, if it, oh, this is actually a really big mistake. If you do damage to this creep, it casts a spell when you pull it, and it actually prevents the pull from working. Really? So until this hits full HP, he's going to have trouble pulling. But yeah, these are the big creeps. They're immune to most spells. They're really strong and difficult to kill. There's one on every both sides of the map, and uh, they're a lot harder to kill than some of these camps here. But a hero that I want to talk about, because remember, we talked about a little bit that Earthshaker and Sand King are kind of similar in nature, but the great thing about Sand King 
is although his, his stun at level 1 is very short range, once he hits this level 3 purge, he's going to get level 2 in Sandstorm. He's going to hit that uh, maybe the next wave, I would think. The so Sandstorm is a channeling spell, meaning you can't move while you use it, but when you do use it, you'll become invisible, you'll deal damage to the units around you, and what he'll do is go to the jungle, stack creeps, over and over again, and then just sit there and farm. He gets a lot of experience, gets a lot of gold, and he's also another hero that wants a blink dagger pretty pretty fast, so watch for that. It's similar to the way Batrider runs. We actually only have one stack so far, so not a huge amount for him to deal with, but they're doing a really good job of zoning out Zhao Wei, the nature's prophet from EXP. He's only at level one here. In fact, the, the, the support Earthshaker is almost at the same level as him, so They've done a really good job making sure he doesn't get anything Radiant's at all in this game so far. And that's attack. good for them because their mid game, that means that Nature's Prophet isn't going to be very strong. If we compare this to Tide, Tide's also at level 2. Denied. So both of the team's supports are doing a really good job keeping the, the offlaner from getting experience. And that's usually the biggest thing they need is experience. Not for long, though. Nature's Prophet's getting a lot of experience now. He's going to hit level 3. Oh, wow. Tide Hunter. He's almost at level 3, but he's just stuck in the enemy jungle at this point. He doesn't know what to do, because the lane, like you talked about, is pushed in the favor of Newbie. So he doesn't yeah. want to be able to die, because remember, towers are extremely powerful in the early game. We might have a gank attempt here from the Skyrath mage and the Sanking. There's the slow. No first ultimate slow. Big master. Fishing. There's no way he's getting out. That's the first blood going away of Vichy Gaming. Ooh, oh, Lifesteal actually bad. comes in. He's going to slow Ember Spirit with the open wounds, which we haven't talked about. It's a nice... Very, that's like one of the best slows in the game, but you have to yeah. be basically at melee range, but he was able to do so thanks to him picking up those phase boots, which you talked about last game. It gives you nice damage, gives you extra move speed when you activate, so a nice turnaround kill, but Brewmaster, level 5 compared to the mid Ember Spirit, which is not, okay, actually they're the same. I really love these yeah. early TPs that come out of newbies sometimes. Um, they're really awesome. This this rotation here ended up securing the kill in the mid hero, and even though Brewmaster ended up dying, if they both die, it's a bit better. He's going to hit level 6 before the Brewmaster is, but Moo's been wrecking him in terms of last hits. He's actually about 10 ahead. He's doing very, very well here against Super. Talk about so why that is. That's because uh, Moo is, or the Ember Spirit, if he doesn't get as many last hits, he doesn't have as much gold, which means his items aren't as good. So if we go back to the basketball analogy, that means that <laughs> yes. he's not going to be as tall as his opponent is, so it's going to give him a disadvantage in the lane matchup. Here, we're going to see Plat maybe an ulti. Nope, nope. Oh, Big nice nuke's not super. He might have to use his ultimate to jump over this fissure if he does want to. Oh, he's, or he's just going to stand there for just eight seconds, just like in the time. video that you got, you guys saw. That's actually, for once, a good video showing the demonstrating the ways of the fissure. Shocking to say the least. But yeah, when we say TP, uh, in the real world it means toilet paper, but here, uh, well sometimes it, I guess it could mean toilet paper in Dota. But mo more often than not, it is actually teleport. It's, a, it's an item you buy for 135 gold. You can teleport to your towers, buildings, things like that, after a short channeling time. If you get stunned, though, while you're channeling it, it could actually get disabled completely. You yeah. lose all that. So how, like he just did, he purchased a TP scroll from the side shop. It costs 135 gold, and he channeled attack. it and cast and teleported mid, and that allowed him to run forward and get the kill on the Ember Spirit earlier. The downside to this is that it hurts his farm, because despite him getting a kill here, once he gets mid, he can't teleport back again, because it has a cooldown. So he has to walk all the way from mid back to bottom, where he can get farm again. So if he TPs mid, it doesn't work out. It's not good. He's TPing top again, actually. He gets on the right side of the fissure. This is good for him. Looking for the open wound. Super, maybe the kill. He's going to jump, throws out another one, and this is not so good for Newbie here. Can they? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Almost catches him. He's going to jump again. That's all three of his fire remnants. And how has now wasted his time. His last TP was good. This one was not so good. They didn't get a kill out of it. They, they pretty heavily. I mean, the problem is, right now, you guys are seeing the power of, or not the power, but the the impotence, maybe, of Newbie if they don't have Blink Daggers. Radiant's all of these heroes, other than Lifesteal and Nation's Prophet, need Blink Daggers to initiate. And they just kept running forward and forward, and they couldn't find anybody. And of course, I mean, Lifesteal has a great slow, but again, he has to be up close and personal to get that off. So now, yeah. they're going to mount this push. Looks like we might actually have a team fight here. We'll see. But Tidehunter does not have Ravage. He's only level 4. So no team fight. In fact, that might be enough for them just to give this up completely. Dyer's yeah, they know that they can't defend this very well. Uh, their best team fight Dyer's ability, like you said, is Tidehunter's Ravage. But they're up against a Brewmaster, and his ulti is very good in team fights as well. It makes Radiant's it hard to fight because he's just going to jump in, and he's going to be annoying towards a lot of you. Very wisely, Vici Gaming will shift to the mid lane, and they'll try to take a tower. This is called a trade Dyer's or a split push. They'll avoid the fallen. fight. They'll go somewhere else and try to take a tower of their 
their own, which is kind of like a scummy way to play. It's, it's, I mean, it's something you have to do in Dota, but it's kind of scummy for two reasons. Or RTK gets caught, he's gonna try to teleport out. No stuns here, so no way to stop him from teleporting. Um, you have to stun somebody if they're teleporting. It's scummy because it's like, if you think about it, it's like an undeserving way to take a tower. You would think that, oh, you get here with a lot of heroes, you're really strong, you push the tower down. No, you just go somewhere else where they're not and take it out. It's like strike and run tactics. It's a little scummy, but that is that is just how battle goes, you know? That's how it goes. Battle, there are no rules in battle, except in games, I guess. Wow, these treants look crazy. Have you seen I think I have actually Siler. Ooh, does get spotted actually. Radiance so that's actually a decent initiation attack. early game with that fissure, but they just haven't been able yeah. to follow it up with anything. Because you have to again, a lot of these heroes just have to be up close in order to do real, real damage. They have three melee heroes on newbie. Something to keep in mind here. But looking at Luna, level seven, she has her power charge. This is one of the boosts that you can buy. It gives you uh, the ability to change the uh, stats between ability, uh -huh. intelligence, and strength. Right now she's on strength, so she's gonna be having more health overall, and also gives it a little bit of attack speed. As well. A lot of attack speed, actually. Yeah. I would say the attack speed is more important than the stat attributes in a lot of situations, especially on a carry. A hero like Luna, she wants to do damage by right-clicking because she gets all this bonus damage from her Luna Blessing. So if she can stack that up with attack speed from Power Treads, it's really good. Although she does really like the eight strength, which gives her a lot of survivability. It's like 150 HP or something like that. All right, so this is what we're waiting for for Newbie. Looking at the master and oh, okay, perfect time actually. A Fissure into the Thunderclap. He's going to use his ult just to kill his Skyrath. It seems to be worth it. They're going to try to transition this into a tower, but they're way to speechy gaming. Tidehunter though, still only level four, so they might have to give this up again. But he really needs to hit level six. Here comes the master. He's going to attempt to run away. He's going to get sprouted. Here comes a beautiful Fissure, and from behind, actually, Life Suit is here. Going to try to deal some damage with Blue Master. going to be the first casualty of war. And like you said, Ember Spirit is so weak against physical damage, so Life Suit just tears right through him. But now, Newbie is on the run. Silence is Life Suit. He's going to attempt to run away. He gets slowed. He gets stunned. He gets Burrow Strike. But a beautiful Fissure is actually going to finish off Sanking as he was initiating. And Life Suit is going to live as a result. So Dyer's nicely done for Newbie Gaming. Under attack. Brewmaster, look how close he was to Blink Dagger. He might have even had enough money at the time. Wow. He's so close. Only 200 gold, and that's really what they're waiting for. Uh, once he picks that up, and looking at mid lane, we didn't even mention this. The wards are down. Dyer's for middle Shadow Shaman. He gets a scummy power play. Himself. This is a, this is the definition of scummy play. Wait till the fight happens. <laughs> yeah. You go somewhere as a weak little support hero. You drop your wards down, and bam, a tower goes down. Just as good as five years grouping up. And as a result, Brewmaster gets that 200 gold because he was in base. Everybody gets 200 yeah. gold on the team, and he picks up that blink dagger. It's a really good example of how important towers are because otherwise he was going to have to go somewhere in lane. He was going to maybe have difficulty farming there and things like that, and instead he ends up going to the ball here. lane. And it's going to be all good. So this is what we were talking about. Sand King gets stacked a bit, using his sandstorm, the creeps. Actually, that's pretty cool. Did he pull that creep? Um, I don't know how that's he did odd. that. That's it. Because typically speaking, when you're sitting there in Sandstorm, the creeps will run away and then they'll come back, so it takes a little bit longer. But for whatever reason, that creep was forcing the neutral to yeah. stand still. I'm not sure what that was all about. All right, so the cool combo that the Dyer's Brewmaster can do here is, is he attack. can have the Lifestealer use Infest on him. It'll store Lifestealer inside Brewmaster. That way, when Brewmaster blinks in, uses Clap, and Dyer's splits off, the Lifestealer can fallen. jump out. So it's like you give Lifestealer free Blink Dagger of his own because you can both jump yeah. in during that. So, Newbie's going to keep pushing here. Do they have ultis? They do have ulti. 13 seconds left on the primal split on Brewmaster. If he can just blink, clap on one of these important heroes like Skyrath Mage or Luna, then and they can kill her. Uh, that's the fight. I mean, they just need to kill one of those heroes. They do have Ravage on Tidehunter, though. They're shifting over. They're going to fight this. That means that Tidehunter has his most important ability. It means Vici Gaming is as strong as they're going to get for a while. Um, at least until they get some big items on Sanking here, but they're going to try to defend this as long as possible. Banana as attack. well. Found an invisibility rune. That means out, he puts, just puts the ward down. He says, whatever, we're just going to try to force this tower into a little bit. Oh, great fissure. Actually, not a good fissure. Sellers on the wrong side. Can't kill him. Don't kill him. The Ravage comes through. Epicenter comes out. Echo Slam does a lot of damage from the Earthshaker, but I think Earthshaker's going to go down. No, not quite yet. Newbie still chasing buyback from Siler. The Luna, he wants to get some kills out of this. They go back in. They will also get Life Stealer, five dead heroes on Newbie. We did have buybacks though, but there's two things that this accomplishes. Not only do they kill five heroes, but they're also going to defend the tower.
and that means less gold for Nubia. I thought those wards were going to kill him. Yeah. It didn't happen, though. It's happened before, but not yeah. this time. Uh, Ember Spirit, obviously, very weak against physical damage. The rat, okay, yeah, you're right. The Fissure was a beautiful initiation until you figured out, oh, wait, wow, look at you the can't teams. actually get to him. Luna ended up dying anyway, though, and bought back. So that's a win in itself for Nubia, but they did lose yeah. their entire team, so obviously that's, not what they want. That's maybe not worth it. Yeah, look at the EXP jump. A huge difference. If you lose that many Dyer's heroes and you don't get any in return, you lose a lot, actually. But Nubia now is purchasing or sorry they all tp back to the bot lane to secure the tower Dyer's and why did this work because they knew that vici gaming used all of their long duration ulti or the long cooldown ulties eclipse was used epicenter was used ravage was used they respawned so fast at this point that they're just going to keep pushing they're like all right well we lost the fight we lost the levels you got levels but we're just going to get gold advantage over you and they're going to try to keep doing this here yeah, yeah. Master has his ultimate up again. They were seeing a similar initiation, just showing things up here. Ember Spirit gets Shadow Shaman to half health. And just like that, they might have to back up just for a bit. Life Stealer has Infest. I'm really surprised they haven't tried using this combination because Brewmaster is available to initiate it at any moment. But I guess they're going to group up for now. But Life Stealer, okay, he's just really surprised by this. I guess it's more of a surprise factor as opposed to a pushing. So they're just going to use this to help push. They're the rock. Wow. Shadow Shaman Off cool on again. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. It doesn't seem like that's very long. Well, 38 <laughs> seconds, seconds to a Ravage on Tidehunter. That, they'll be ready to fight during that. There's some pinks from FY and uh, the Earthshaker. They want to go on him. He's very squishy. Oh, how's he getting burst down right at the start? Panda splits coming out. Sand King falls down super. The Ember Spear running to safety, but the tower still falls. So they lost a carry. He did buy back, which is costing him a lot, about 400 gold. This is what we call ob objective-based gaming, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. So Vici wants to fight. They want to try to keep him at bay as long as possible, try to use that Brewmaster ult, because remember, that's another big ultimate. If he uses it, that means they can't really fight until it's back up, which is another two minutes. But at the same time, they did get the tower, like you said. So the experience advantage, Vici gaming, like you said, gold advantage, probably newbie's favorite. Yep. I would just be shocked if it's not the case. The XP isn't. Gold it should be, though. Yeah, ex you uh, got experience is Vici and then yeah. gold for... Yeah, if you anyway. group up in five and push a lot like this, you usually don't have experience advantage because you're always in one place and you right. split the experience equally. Like, if this creep dies right now, both the life stealer and the Brewmaster would get experience for it. So you usually don't want to group up as five unless you're trying to force towers like that. Gold is uh, usually a lot better than EXP is. Much more important, though EXP is always going to be nice. So. Um, the one reason why it was pretty cool how they ended up killing the lifestyle like, again, he has an ability that allows you to cast magic immunity, but if you get silence, you can't cast the ability that allows you to become magic immune, so it's a bit of a counter. Yeah. If you catch him before rage is used, you get the kill, and they followed up with a stun, and they used the Skyrath Mage ulti to just burst him down, so very easy kill on lifestealer there. If not lifestealer, it might be brewmaster, so maybe it was better that it was lifestealer that died yeah, there. Yeah, of course, one of the roles that we talk about all the time is lifestealer is now inside somebody. Like, yes. Ooh, I Shadow like this. Shaman picked up a blink dagger not too long ago. When we say carry, it's a hero that carries your team to victory. So to top you want to put a attack. lot of items, a lot of experience on them. So Life Stealer, as an example, is the carry for newbie. And both Ember Spirit and Luna. Ooh, they're gonna fight super. Here comes the blink. There's X, they're coming out. Nice. Looking for the shackles. Oh, oh what a mistake. Oh, oh he comes back. He's stuck. Oh, he messes up. Banana making a big mistake here. That Doesn't was matter. a huge mistake. Wow. That was a kill. It does matter, man. That was a free kill. I mean, it doesn't matter that he. Uh, what was I going to say? I don't, I, I don't know, but he has <laughs> two disables. His first one only lasts for 1.25 seconds, and he was greedy. He tried to, to do too much with too little. He wanted to cast Ether Shock after the Hex and then shackle him, but that fraction of a second where the Ember Spirit wasn't stunned, he was able to use his Fire Remnant ability and get out. And because of that, Banana missed his shackles. He could have stunned him for 2.75 seconds, all while Life Stealer hit him. That would have been a kill on that enemy's carry, and a lot of, maybe not a lot of wasted time, like but a melee spirit huge trees, mistake. Is that how he got stuck? Um, I guess so. It, it, for some reason, the where the spirit was, it didn't break the trees, so he got stuck yeah. here, and he was forced I to use his third spear. I thought that's what you were spirit. talking about with the mistake. I mean, that was a mistake in itself, well, of course. That was a mistake from Ember Spirit, yes, but that should have been a dead Ember oh, Spirit. Oh, look at this, Purge. Look at Sand King. So close to getting his Blink Dagger. This is going to be huge for Vici Gaming. I think right now, Vici Gaming definitely has the advantage overall, even though they're down in towers, down in gold, but they're set up pretty damn well for late game. I mean, they have the Blink now on Sand King. Earthshaker no, is really the hero. What? All right, they do. Yeah, he, you're right. <laughs> Thank you. Damn, Earth you're smart. Is the hero. Oh my god, he has 1,900 gold. I just looked a minute ago. Earthshaker? Wow. Thousand. So this is actually the biggest item for newbie by far because he brings a ton of team fight presence. So right now it's really just Brewmaster. I mean, Shadow Shaman has the wards, of course, but you can kind of just run around them, so to speak. And they come, I don't know, it's, it's just Earthshaker, man. When you guys see this ultimate go off, which I don't think we've seen yet this game.
Thank he, you. He's dunked once in that dunked. in that big fight bottom by the tier two, but okay. oh, that's right. that was about it. So it's a huge explosion. When he gets the blink dagger, and it's very soon, it's actually I would argue better than Sand King's blink dagger. Sand King's blink dagger is great because it allows you to epicenter for 600 magic damage. But the Earthshaker, you can place, it makes all of your other abilities extremely good as well. Sanking basically has two good abilities that Blink makes better, and Earthshaker's up, like, uh, viability. The amount of time that he's useful is just a lot of, oh, he made a big mistake here. Oh, he was about to get this last hit and then teleport home. He canceled it and started TPing, so he wasted a teleport. He's got the gold now. He's no. got to run back. But the downside is that he won't have a teleport scroll yeah. during the fight, and his HP is a lot lower. This is actually a pretty big mistake from Sanshing. So he going says, well, tower. too bad, we he's gotta go. Attack. He's just gonna blink, ult, and then die, but he's gonna do his job. That's Radiant all structures all are fortified. There's the infest, this time it's in Brewmaster. Look for the initiation possibility. Tank. Also smoke. They're gonna find poor Siler on oh, the Luna. He's so dead. He is done for. They use the, or the Brewmaster ult as well. And actually, fighting Radiant's continues in the down tower. river. Shadow Summon attack. getting stunned by the Sand King. Beautiful whirlwind from the Brewmaster Storm Spirit. And look at that vision, blocking everybody in. But Banana on a Shadow Summon gets destroyed. It is a three for one, though. So so he trades his life and three die for Vichy Games. They're gonna transition this to the big ancient on the map that is. Oh, big deny. Has been denied. Moog gets it. Half the gold that he would have gotten from that tower ends up being blocked because of the nice TP from Brewmaster. Great deny from him. And Vichy Gaming's gonna be sad for that. They got a tower, but they didn't get much out of it, and they lost three heroes. They lost their carry and they lost two supports, which is pretty bad. They've lost that in, in exchange for one oh, support on Nibi. He's gonna do it. Ooh, this is really Your scary. Oh, he goes in actually. He makes a mistake. He used all his spirits. He's dead. What a mistake. Oh. Super. Oh my gosh, the Ember Spirit throwing his life away. He tried to steal the Aegis, which is the item that drops from Roshan, but he forgot that he had other spirits on the map, and what that does, it sends you to them first. So he was really late, he got shot in, and then he panicked. He tried to throw his third one, and he launched it too fast, and he ended up teleporting very short distance. He didn't go to the high ground. Feeds himself we are four deaths for Vici. This is so weird to see. If you guys watched any of the group stages, Vici Gaming was the one team. <laughs> Or shaker, by the way, blink I, I a bunch of trees. He's stuck in there. All right, one his nice friend guy. helps him out. But Vici Gaming, one of the few mistakes. Like we're seeing them make a lot of mistakes in this series. Yeah, they which are. We're not used to seeing. They were just on point throughout the group stages. I mean, do you think that the money has anything to do with all this pressure? The crowd, perhaps. I mean, there's so many people I, here. I don't know. Did they think they were going to lose to Newbie? It's looking like Newbie's getting an advantage. The game isn't over by any means, but. I mean, they're at a 10k gold advantage. The EXP's back to zero, so everything that Vici Gaming had an advantage in the early game is gone now. They don't have the EXP advantage anymore because Newbie's been able to leverage that gold. And it hasn't even been that much gold. It's mostly been tactical decisions, and that's one cool thing about Dota. Gold advantage isn't everything. It's largely positioning and whether or not you make mistakes in team fights. So they were allowed to get those three kills right at the start. Vici Gaming didn't see it coming from Newbie, and they're getting themselves into a place that they almost can't get out of. Yeah, this is going to be tough, but anything can happen, like we've said so many times. I mean, we've seen, I mean, even last game, there was a big turnaround just in the middle of the game, so I mean, we'll see anything happening here. But Brewmaster, actually, he is going for the Black King bar first. So, like we talked about, Brewmaster is not a hero. Maybe. It's not, that's true, it could be an Agon. But typically, when you see this, it's going to be a Black King bar. We'll just wait for the, what item it's actually going to be. But, of course, the Black King bar is what makes you magic immune. I mean, you can't be silenced, you can't be stunned for the most part. And, I mean, that's still a great item overall for him, but the Aghanims is also excellent. The Aghanims, a lot of heroes can pick it up, especially in this game, where it'll Dyer's increase the, the efficiency of your ultimate in some way. It's different for every hero. For Brewmaster, it gives him so much extra damage to work with. And this is going to be another free tower for newbies. So Vichy is fine with giving up all these towers Dyer's at this point. I mean, they tower don't really have a choice. They don't feel like they can fight. I mean, look at Tide yeah. Hunter. He didn't go for Blink Dagger. He went for a mechanism that's given a lot of sustainability in fights. There's no way for him to get into the fight without just walking in. There's the Shadow Shaman Wards. And you see those little tiny units pushing? That's a Necronomicon. I do. That is what Nature is probably picked up. Ooh, I want to kill Super here. He's going to jump back out. That cost him two spirits now. He's actually out of spirits for three seconds. So no movement speed for him in a bit. They again nuke down the creeps, but the tower's taking damage. This is looking a lot like a one Rax from Newbie here. They're looking to initiate Sunshine. The Earthshaker on the back has his blink ready. There's the infest. He pops out again to do some AoE damage. Tower's gonna fall. There's the open wound. The Luna's in trouble. He's in so much trouble. The right click, he's gonna die. Mech is used. May will he survive? Actually, no, the nuke gets him. Aegis reclaim in three minutes. Ravage comes to big damage. This is big for them. Who's gonna go down? Brewmaster falls. There's the epicenter. This is a big fight for Vici Gaming. They get a lot of core heroes, but the respawn on Brewmaster. 
Brewmaster in just a moment. Here he comes, popping back. All right, that's how actually right clicking now. So that was the Brewmaster buyback. Oh. Touchdown down, got two. Did big damage, Echo Slam. Oh my gosh, the Eclipse comes through as well. Earthshaker falls, but VG Gaming still fighting through this. Zhao Wei's gonna fall. How's gonna fall? VG Gaming defends it. Moon comes back. Can he get kills? I don't even know. FY. The Skyrath Mage probably is going to fall down here, but maybe not even. He gets the miss. This is bad now. Maybe even the Brewmaster will die. He's only got about four seconds left before the Pandas run out. And can they get the fall? He's going to try to blink. Doesn't get it. What a bounce. Oh, and maybe Moo as well. The Brewmaster is going to fall. And Newbie, who we thought was going to take the Rex, doesn't do it. VG Gaming defense. All right, so this is exactly what happened. So this is called a bait and switch or a bait and buyback. So Luna which is the hero, of course, Newbie wants to kill because she is the carry, the hero that's going to be doing a lot of damage the later the game goes. She was out in the middle of nowhere, and she knew she was going to die, because look at her items. She still doesn't have the Black King bar. That is the item that will give you a lot of survivability in fights. So she basically sacrificed her life, forced two heroes for Newbie to be out of position, closer yeah. to the base, and she just immediately bought back with all her abilities up and just shredded everybody. Brewmaster somehow, I didn't even see how this happened, he died before he got his ultimate yeah. off, so he bought back, te or teleported as close as he could, ran all the way there, came in at the very last second when everybody was already dead on his team, finally used his ultimate, and then dies right off the bat. So that is a huge loss for Nubia. There's a newly picked up Black King bar from Luna. She actually might wow. die with it activated. Oh, that is just truly unfortunate. Sanki gets a nice girl strike, but he's in quite a bit of trouble. He uses his... Oh! Ooh. Last right click to go. So after I praise Vichy Gaming, they lose two, and Nubi's now on the on the offensive. This is so bad for their team. He didn't aggressively banana. Good dodge from him. Zhao Wei taking damage as well. That was the ulti from Skywrath Mage, so he won't have that for a bit. He's in so much trouble. Yes. No armor on that guy. The Dyer's life stealer does just physical damage, attack. eats right through that. And in a game where they almost defended it, look at that, two quick kills, the newbie completely calm about this, is going to turn Dyer's around immediately and take a range barracks. Dyer's range barracks is not Dyer's super significant. I think newbie's going to stay in. Yeah, they want to get the melee barracks. Getting the melee barracks is super important here. Well. There is backdoor protection right now, meaning there's no creeps from their wave that are in the base, so the, the barracks is going to continue to regenerate until the creeps actually get there, but they do so much damage, Dyer's it doesn't really matter. Barracks, Finally, the creeps arrive, and down goes Dyer's the melee barracks. barracks, so that is one is lane of complete barracks on top of Newbie. That lane will continue to push for the entire game. Oh, big fissure. Gone on Tidehunter, who does not have Blink. He has a mech to help him stay alive. Down he wants to use Rap, he just might sacrifice his life in the end. Actually, that go? Echo Slam is going to be used. Interesting. I'm, I guess he's going to try to force the buyback. You would think oh. down the side is dead. Is he live? Finally, we're going to try to ravage yeah. in the last second, actually. That might have been a huge mistake, so maybe it's better that he died. I don't know. I mean, there's no way that Vichy Gaming could have initiated with him because he got fissured out. Yeah, that was going to be really hard to get that kill. He does have buyback in case they want to defend, but he bought his team a lot of time, but he didn't really accomplish a whole lot by being there. He was being too greedy. He pushed up the mid lane by himself for a long time, and as soon as he saw uh, reports that Nature's Prophet was teleporting, he started TPing, and the Earthshaker from down here landed the fissure that stopped the teleport. And then he's way outside of his base, and all of his enemy heroes are right here. So it was a pretty easy cleanup at that point, and unfortunately his team wasn't able to get there to defend him. So. so just to give you guys an idea of how these items really work for newbies, so Blink Dagger on Shadow Shaman, you guys have probably already seen it where he instantly teleports a short uh, short area away and the reason that's really significant for him is because of his second ability text. It's an instant initiation and since Blink is also instant there's almost no way to counter it unless you can see it coming somehow. So that's one combination to speak of. It's actually going towards an Aghanim Scepter which as we talked about makes your ultimate better. For him it just makes his Serpent Wards deal more damage and that's gonna be that's gonna hurt a lot in this game if it continues. But uh, who was it? Oh, sorry. We haven't talked about Urn ever. You want to talk about that? Dr. Yeah, sure. Who's, who's got one? Earthshaker does? Yeah. Cool. Um, this is an item. It's very inexpensive. It's only about 1,000 gold. And what it does is when an enemy hero dies by you, you get a charge. So this little number in the bottom right. And with those charges, you can cast it on yourself or your allies to heal up up to 400 damage non-combat, which means that if you take player damage, it's going to go away. So you can heal up your allies if they're not taking damage from enemies. Or you can use it offensively. You'll see a little red circle with like lines coming up around people. If you're using it offensively, it does a lot less damage, only 150. If you use it on allies, it heals 400, and then it looks green. So it's good if you push and you fight and you get kills, and then whoever's missing some HP, you can heal them back up and keep pushing. It helps the game end a little faster and just generally keeps you good at fighting as you continue. So most Earthshakers don't have the money for this, but Earthshaker, this Earthshaker, 
here. Sun Cheng here is really far ahead, so he's got plenty of cash to spend on it. Yeah, and that's the benefit of taking so many towers in the early game. You get items on heroes that don't typically get a lot of items in general. Yeah. But one thing to keep note of, of course, Ember Spirit. Uh, he has an item called Battle Fury. This will help him get a lot more gold because, look, when he attacks a creep wave, even when he uses Slide of Fist, because that's basically an auto attack, it does cleave damage, which means a bit of splash damage applied to creeps and heroes that are nearby. This basically allows you to farm a lot faster, which means uh -huh. you'll be getting items even faster. And he's, I would say, top five heroes in the game as far as item potential. Like, when yeah. you build items on him, they he scale so really well. The they're they're like abusable basically. There's some heroes that have abilities that I mean you can apply on a one free auto attack to everybody and you're invulnerable while you do it. So if you buy damage items on this guy, it just allows him to do so many good things. So it's really strong. We have a blink dagger now on Tidehunter as well. Yep. The big items that Vichy Gaming ha need they have now. They're still behind in terms of gold. EXP is about equal. Yeah, gold is really far behind, 15,000. But there's a lot of towers on the map, so if they can kill these, it'll be really good for them. But Brewmaster, he did go for the Black King bar, so opting okay. not to make his ultimate smart. more powerful is much smarter, like you said. Because you pop the Black King bar, once you initiate, you cannot be silenced, you cannot be stunned against this Vici gaming team. I mean, Ravage does literally nothing when you have BKB yep. activated. But he's going to do that. He's going to jump in with his Thunderclap, right-click a little bit, and then... When it gets closer to the duration finishing, he'll pop his ultimate. Because that's the problem in these fights. He hasn't been able to get that off consistently. Yeah. So he'll do that, deal tons of damage. I mean, he's level 14, so he really wants to hit level 16 Ooh. to get that level. Got a triple ancient stack down here. They're going to kill them together. Couple nukes. Hey, what do you think uh, the life stealer is going to build? He's got a mithril hammer, mithril hammer here. Do you think it's going to be a desolator, or do you think he's going to build a black king bar? All right, so black king bar would be good because... It's well, normally it's completely double. uncommon. All right, it looks like it is going to be a deso, I think. Because uh, he's bought a second Black King Bar would be but... good on him, because like we've mentioned, his rage, if you get silence, you can't use his rage, unlike yeah. BKB, which is the item. So that's one reason to get it. But a Desolator is really strong on him, because it, it gives minus seven armor to yeah. any tower or... Building, hero, yeah, all that stuff. Hero, anything like that, which so, means he's going to be dealing a lot more physical damage. It's yeah. great for pushing in general, too. The, the trade-off is, if you get a Desolator, he's so far ahead in items that nobody's going to be able to touch him. He'll just shred through anybody. If you get a Black King Bar, you'll never Dyer's die, ever. If you get, even if he gets silenced, that one time he died, it was because Sky Skyrath ulti silenced him while he got stunned, and then he got magic bursted. If you get to BKB, that guy's not dying unless he gets stunned into Dyer's a stun. I really like this, this, this uh, pickup on Desolator, though, because look, he's infested inside Brewmaster. That's a lot of initiation power, right? Like, that's true. Like, a ton of damage from Thunderclap. Oh. Remember, when you infest out, that's burst damage as well. And then on top of that, you can right-click, like, two shots, and somebody's dead, basically. So that's what they're looking for. So Roshan attempt from Nature. X. This is a fake. You're not gonna be able to kill him with those little tiny tree ants. And I really like this pickup. And this is the thing about Dota 2, guys. When you pick up an item that has a lot of game breaking possibilities, you want to save it, meaning you don't want to show the opponent that you have it. You want it to be a complete surprise factor. So let's see if that comes into effect. In fact, it works on Roshan as well. Look how fast he's fight starting. Ooh, has uh, okay. to All right. the radiant. They were thinking about stealing it. Don't forget about their mishap earlier where they made a mistake, and it was really bad for them. Yeah. Didn't end up uh, losing them anything. They jumped in for a moment, and it all worked out. So, well, I mean, they they have an Aegis. That's a downside. Now he doesn't need a Black King Bar. Even if he yeah. dies, he's like, oh, well, I'm dead, but, you know, I'm being respawned now, so it's not a big deal. But with this Desolator, man, think about, he's going to two-shot the Skyrath Mage or something. Yeah. That's sure. incredible. Two or three shot, he'll die so fast. All these heroes are in all a bad spot, basically. Pretty much. I bet, you know, Vici Gaming does have a good, what we call, turtle lineup. Turtle meaning you want to stay in the base, put your shell up, try to be as defensive as possible, elongate the game as long as possible so that Luna and both, or both Luna and Ember Spirit can get items. Uh, I mean, Tidehunter is one of the best in the game because she's almost always going to get off that big time ultimate ravage. Yeah. Then you have Skyrath Mage with the silence utility, nice burst damage to go along with more team fights for Saint King. So they have the heroes to do this, but the question is can Nubi force the issue. And when you have the Aegis, remember, you can be a little bit more confident, you can be more cocky, you can go in when you normally wouldn't, just sacrifice your life in a lot of ways. So right. we'll see if Nubi has the power to take them down. I think they're getting ready to push now. They, remember, they did use the Mass Serpent Wards on Roshan. This is why they're not going high ground right now. They used the ultimate cooldown here. Shadow Shaman hits level 11. He picks up a negative scepter. He's oh, got his ulti in 20 timing. seconds. Yeah. Now they're going to go high ground. And high ground means they're going from here to here. 
And this is what you mean about high ground. When you go up high, it's very dangerous because your area is much more clumped. It's easier for your opponents to use AoEs on you. They'll use Ravage, they'll use Epicenter, they'll use Eclipse. It's much scarier, and they're ready to go now. This is where Vici needs to win a fight. It's going to be a little tough because Newbie can play it really slow, and by that, that means that the top lane, again, is always pushing. And as this wave pushes in, it means that not all of VG is going to be set up to fight. So if there's four heroes here and Sand King's top pushing and uh, Newbie can start a fight, it's really good for them. Because they can just win a 5v4. Yeah. They're already ahead. Sure. 5v4 is easy. Yeah. So split them up. Go in when they're split. Force the fight and try to win the fight. When they win the fight, a second Rax comes. And once you get a second Rax, it's almost impossible to win. Almost impossible. But against Ember Spirit, you never know, actually. Now, yeah. keep in mind, Life Shield, of course, has the Aegis of the Immortal. This does not last forever. So when they kill Roshan, it actually lasts for six minutes once you pick it up. It's already been two minutes. So they have a four-minute window where they want to use this. Because, again, it gives you that second life. You don't want to just waste it for no reason. So it'll be reclaimed in about four, a little less than four minutes' time. And, yeah, they're going to push now for sure. So Blink Deck, even a Black King Bar and Earthshaker. Wow. That's ridiculous. You never Some see Earthshakers this farm. They really just need Arcane Boots and a Blink Dagger to be a full utility. But now that he has this, he doesn't have to worry about Ravage. He doesn't have to worry about Silence. There's no way to bring the die. How can die here? We'll see. Worth comes down. Fisher comes down. Siler. Oh Ravage God. comes through and catches Moo. Catches Banana, but it does almost nothing. Tidehunter is in a lot of trouble. He's going to die almost immediately. And nobody on Newbie goes down. Yeah, and remember, Aegis is still up. They're not going to waste it, though. The Dying Urn, of, uh, Urn of Shadows is used to heal up life. So he two shot, two here. Oh, they're going back in. A nice counter initiation. But not really matter. Three dead for Vici Game. And they fought back plenty as well. Skyrath Mage on the run against this huge Black King bar Earthshaker. That is a scary sight oh to see. God. Just pounds him to the ground. This is a second Rax in advantage. Newbie. Are they going to do this? Aegis has finally popped. He's going to be back up. Brewmaster's ult's about to come into duration as well. Oh, too ooh. far in the favor. Oh, this is bad. Abdul Look at that damage. Oh my god, one hit away, but he barely gets it. Dyer's middle He's just going to go for this third attack. lane of racks. Remember, if you get three lanes of racks, that means your creeps, they don't become a little bit more powerful. They become ridiculously they, more powerful. They become unstoppable in almost all. They've got the hero to, to stop it. It's actually he Ember Spirit, farm, but though, he's really. just not there yet. He needs like two Battle Furies and to finish his Crystalis, which is an item that allows you to crit. It allows you to crit on every hit, and then you can cleave on that as well. And they had to buy back for that as well. I mean, that was buybacks buy on Luna, back. that was buybacks on Ember Spirit, the two heroes that they need to keep getting farm on. Those heroes died. They had to spend more of their money to respond immediately, because otherwise the game just would have ended there. I mean, it's it's not the path they want to take, but it's the path that they have to take to get put in a better spot. So here we are, two racks down. Vici Gaming only has one racks. They don't have their ultis yet but they've got to make something happen. They've got to force a fight now because they can't just sit around and wait anymore. Once right. they're two racks, the gold gain of newbie is just way too high. They don't even have this first tower mid yet. That is how far behind they are. Of course, Radiant's the middle concerned. tower is There's under the mech attack. to build them up a bit. The question Radiant is, does newbie want to go in? I, I don't think so. doesn't have ultimate for 10 seconds, so I, I, I'd actually agree with you. Actually, nature's probably just pushing bottom. This is what you're talking about. The scummy way of nature's problem. Radiant's yeah. middle actually, tower is under attack. Into Brewmaster. They're going to blow up Luna. He just fought back not too long ago. Look at literally two hits. Good game. It's called for Beach Game. It's the wow. Insured top four at the International. Holy crap. Unbelievable. They're huge time underdogs here. This is crazy, man. <laughs> Beachy Gaming has got to be really sad about this one. Winning number one in the group stage. Guaranteed top six, and they lose the first round against the team that almost got eliminated. And remember, Vici chose Newbie to play. They chose that team to play them this time. What a mistake. And is, I mean, they take that personally. It's like a chip on your shoulder. This yeah. Is, this like, is the underdog story so far in this. this wow. Place for sure. Holy so Newbie moves on. They guarantee top.